There was one point where I actually did sort of kind of run away from home. I was like, I, I, I didn't stay out. I, I ran away the night of... Uh, the night of, like, it was this... It, I ran away and came back on the same night. So, basically, my idea was I was going to go out and I was just going to, like, take my sleeping bag and take the little pop-up tent that I had. You know, it was basically is the one that, you know, had, like, those rails that stuck together like that. And it was, like, it was, like, you know, one... It was, like, three... It was, like, three uh, things... And then, you know, you could, like, stay inside of it. it. had, like, a little waterproofing thing for it and everything. And I was just going to be like, okay, I'm just... Because this is when my parents were in the midst of, like, getting a divorce. And all they would do was fight. Like, all they would do is just fight, 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 fight. And I just said to myself, I, I'm, I'm not dealing with this anymore. So I, I literally went into the middle of the woods near where my house is. Uh, and... I just decided, like, all right, I'm going to clear this area out, and this is going to be where I live. So I went back there with, like, a machete, chopped down all, like, the briars and all that and everything, and I was just like, okay, this is where I'm going to be. And then I go out there, I set up my tent, I get my sleeping bag out, and I start sleeping. And I don't know what woke me up, but something woke me up, and it was the middle of the night. I was just like, I heard like a rustling or something. And me, I knew better than to like, like go outside of my tent, go outside the tent, because you know, if it was something that was back there, I, I don't know what it was. It might have been a deer, because we had deer in those woods back there. So I was just there, and I was just like. <laughs> I had my pocket knife on me. It was my pocket knife my granddad gave me. And I was just like, very slowly, just like... So like I was saying to myself, I was like, don't open the tent, don't open the tent. They're not, they don't know you're here. They don't know you're here. Just like, all around me. And then all of a sudden... Something brushed up against the side of the tent, and I was like, fuck this. And I, like, opened the tent up, and I just, like, sprinted out of there as fast as I could. And it was, like, straight back to my house. I climbed in through, I climbed in through, like, the back window where I, where I snuck out. And then I, and then I went upstairs and I fell asleep in my, in my bed. Still in, like, the clothes that I was wearing out in the middle of the woods. <laughs> So yeah, I woke up the next morning, and I was just like, and I was just like still dressed up in my gear, like my outdoor gear, like I, and I was like, I thought I was a big tough guy by like going out there and like trying to rough it and be a man. No, I was still just a little kid. Still, still was a little bit of a of, of a wuss. So yeah, that's that's the closest I've ever gotten to running away. So. It was basically just like an overnight stay in like the woods near my house, and I just, I I just got scared my first night and ran straight back. Yeah, because I didn't have a plan. I didn't even have any food. I didn't even bring any food with me. Yeah, so there you go. Anyway, yeah, apparently Rebecca, uh, aka Let Me Explain Studios, also had an experience trying to run away from home. So, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, you ready to check out what she has to say? How about you, Nick? Did you ever have any try experiences trying to run away? Yeah, all I did was sneak out once. I still don't think my mom knows about it. So I snuck out plenty of times. Uh, in my neighborhood, um, we were friends with, uh, I had a friend named Andrew. It's a different Andrew than my best friend, you know. And uh, we had a friend named TJ, and TJ had a sister um, and I can't recall her name off the top of my head, but she was friends with who at the time I had a crush on, which was actually my buddy Wade's cousin, Whitney. And, uh, so it turned out that 
um, the same night that Andrew had come down to spend the night at my house, Whitney was spending the night with TJ's sister mm. up at their house. Okay. And so me and Andrew decided it would be fun to sneak out of my window and go up and hang out with Whitney and TJ and uh, TJ's sister for a little while. Okay. And uh, then came back, snuck back in after hanging out and didn't get caught. So I was only in eighth grade, like, and I never actually was courageous enough to tell her I liked her. So, like, nothing weird happened or anything, you know. I've I, I've been there. It was like, literally just out. like going out when we weren't really supposed to be out, just to hang out with friends for a little while and then come back. I've been there sneaking out a few times. Like, I had like friends come and pick me up, or I would walk to a friend's house and I would hang out there. I lived I lived fairly close to some of my friends. But yeah, needless to say, I was I was a night owl, and I just liked staying out late when I was a kid. That still rings true. I still like staying up late, but yeah, I don't go out as much as I used to. Ugh. So anyway, we got Rebecca's uh, idea. Or we got Rebecca's uh, video here about running away from home. Let's uh, check it out and see what's up. New Witch of the Woods backpack and spiral notebook in the shop. Click the link below to get them before they're gone. I have to have you. Boop, boop, be -doo, be -doo. <laughs> oh, hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and entertainers, my little oodle lollies. Rebecca Parham here. I know exactly what you're thinking right now. You're thinking. <gasps> Becca, why do you have that handkerchief bag on a pole, commonly <laughs> referred to as a bendel that was popularized in the 1930s as a way to visually represent the impoverished migrant workers of the Great Depression? Are you running away? Now what would give you an idea like that? <laughs> I'm just out for a picnic. However, if you care to join me, I'll tell you a story about running away. I believe every single one of us as children went through phases. Some of us had a dinosaur phase, a pony phase, a space phase, any period of time where you got particularly fixated on a subject or idea. Come to think yeah. of it, I don't think we ever stopped going through phases. <clears throat> now I know you're not going to believe this, but as a kid, I was kind of weird. Breaking news, an adult artist was weird as a kid. This in a new research study showing that YouTubers are not as energetic in real life as they are in their videos. More at eight. I was weird right. as a kid, and while it's alleviated slightly, I still feel like I'm weird. I'm weird, too. I don't yeah. really like being weird, but <laughs> it just kind of works out that way, you know? No, I get you. 100%. I it's get not you. like it's on purpose. I just always feel like I'm like... A, I feel like a no shit. Yeah, same, dude. I I have that feeling like the insecurity of like, it's like everyone's judging me right now. They think I'm weird. They think I'm I'm stupid and this and that. One of the things that I always that I actually was thinking about earlier today that I noticed is like, despite being an adult now and despite being in my thirties, even my friends uh, who are dudes usually that are younger than me. For some reason, like, I always have this thing in the back of my mind, like, they know more than me, and they're more wise than me, and they're more mature than me, and I don't know why. Because it's like, Chad, like, I, for some reason, I view Chad like an older brother, but technically I'm older than Chad. Yeah, <laughs> like, technically. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that feeling. I just, like, I... I look at the Vanoss crew, I always imagine them as being older than me whenever I was watching their videos. Turns out I'm older than almost all of them. Mm. I'm older than Vanoss, I'm older than Nogla, I'm older than Terrorizer, I'm older than Tyler, I'm older than uh, most, Marcel. Older than most of them. I think, I think the only ones that are older than me are Moo, Louie, and Sark. I think those are the only ones who are older than me. I think I'm older than Markiplier. How old is Markiplier right now? Let's take a look. But I always view Markiplier as like my senior, you know. <laughs> oh. 34. Okay, so no, actually Markiplier is one year older than me. No, not a year older. I mean, he's... I forget, I forget how old I am sometimes. He's... Hang on. No. Damn. Like, so, Markiplier is two months younger than me. Okay. So, I view him as my senior, but he's only two months younger than I am. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, look at that. Look. Looky, looky. 
Yeah. Nick's older than Mark. <laughs> it's been a couple months, yeah. Actually, how old Rebecca? Also, Markiplier, 89 gang. Hell yeah. Rebecca Parham. Not supposed to ask a lady their age. I'm not asking her. her age. <laughs> You're Googling it. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, damn, she's older than me. What? Damn. I thought damn for it. sure she was younger than me. Damn it. Oh, well. well that... Becca, you look amazing for your age. Just, there you go. I salute the, my senior, in both in YouTube and in, and in age. Anyway, back to the video. Right, yes, it's no surprise to anyone that I was a weird kid. And one of the really bizarre phases I went through around the third grade was this idea of running away from home. To play this game, I would tie up some things into my baby blanket, hang it from a stick over my shoulder, and pretend I was leaving home. Mostly by going into a different room. In fact, at one point, I began to lock myself in the bathroom and pretend it was my tiny little house in the woods. Ha! <laughs> Running away to a house in the woods. The things children come <coughs> up with. Honestly, though, as a kid, I never once thought of actually doing it. I was weird, not stupid. Apart from having no life experience to take care of myself, adults were generally in cahoots with each other. The grand majority of them had this belief that kids shouldn't be walking around outside by themselves or some such tyrannical nonsense. That was not the case with where we were. Where we were, dude, it was always just like free reign. All the kids in the neighborhood were like out and about, getting up to no good. Dude, some kids who were older were like driving their four-wheelers around and like doing donuts in the middle of the gravel. Whenever we were, or whenever I was like, you know, young, like probably up until I was a teenager, I guess, at that point, like my mom was very overly protective. She was, she would like watch me out of the kitchen window while I played in the backyard with my friend, but I had to stay within a certain field of view yeah. of her or I would get in trouble, you know? Dude, there were, there um, were a lot of days I wasn't allowed back in the house. Like, like mom told me to go outside and play and I stayed outside and played. And if I, and I wasn't allowed back in the house and people were just like, well, what do you do? It's like, all right. Well, it was like, well, what do you do about water? What do you do about this? What do you do about food? It's like, Oh, what do we do about food? Well, here's the thing. We knock on the door and tell mom, like, Hey, mom, I'm hungry. Can I get a sandwich or something? And then she would tell me, All right, make yourself a sandwich and then get back out there. And that's what I did. I made myself a, made me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, grabbed myself a cup of water, went back outside, and killed it. And then not only that, but it was like for whenever that water ran out, basically, you just drank from a garden hose. I remember doing that a lot. Yeah. I still remember the taste. <clears throat> Tastes like copper. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah, well, whenever I hit, like, uh, 13 or so, like, mom would not care if I went out to play out with my friends out in the neighborhood and stuff. Oh, you know? oh dude, it was... It's like we would go skateboard down the hill, like I told you about and stuff. Yeah. You know? uh, dude, it was... Uh, when we moved out of, like, the boonies when I was, like, 12 or 13, um, I had already been, like, outside for the most part... Uh, just climbing through the woods and the only thing mom didn't allow me to do she said don't go running across the road like don't go running across the road because the one time I did I went over to the other side and I grabbed the guardrail on the other side of the road all of a sudden I hear from the front porch Nathaniel Jacob Hamilton I'm like <laughs> you done fucked up and then all of a sudden, I just see my mom marching down the like, marching down the stairs, marching through the yard, just like, get out of the room! And then, and then all of a sudden, she's just like, just no, she is beelining straight for me, not breaking eye contact, and I am frozen solid. I cannot move. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, she gets over to me, she pries my hand off the guardrail, brings my ass back over into the yard, and. <laughs> What did I tell you about going over to the other side of the road? And I'm like, it's like, what did I tell you? And I'm like, to not do it? Yeah, and what did you do? I'm sorry, Mom's like, yeah, you're sorry? Okay, go back, go into the backyard. Like, go into the backyard right now. 
Do not leave the backyard. I'm like, and why did you tell me not to do that? Because you could get hurt. And what happened to me anyway? You got, <laughs> I got hurt. No, no, no. That, no, I could have got killed. There's a difference. <laughs> yeah, I guess. my mom spanked my ass and like disciplined me, but I could have got my ass killed. Because that's the thing. Back where we're in, back where we were at, dude. People were driving back there like at 60 miles an hour around that curve. They would come around that curve and just mm, yeah. down towards Guest River. Dude, people had gave no fucks about the speed back there. You could cops, have turned cops. into a fine red mist. Oh yeah. I would have I would have been made into a modern art masterpiece. Bug on a windshield. <sighs> yeah. Like bug in the bug on the windshield or like guts in the grill. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I knew I'd never get out of the neighborhood without a concerned adult picking me up and returning me to a very angry set of parents. <laughs> so no, I had no intention of running away. But mom and dad didn't know that. I don't know what got into me, but one day I wanted to play a practical joke on my mom, and I enlisted the help of my sister to do it. Around this age, Rachel and I were no longer going off to the local daycare after school. We were old enough to walk home. That's right, I eventually achieved my dreams and thereby became a latchkey kid. <laughs> Rachel and I would walk home from school, use our own key to get in, and then we'd have the place to ourselves for about an hour or two before mom got home. Just enough time for tomfoolery. One unsuspecting day after school, I was bored, and thus came the aforementioned harmless prank. I was still in my running away phase, so I wrote a note for mom to find when she got home. The note basically said, Dear mom and dad, I ran away from home, but I'll be fine. Don't put up signs trying to find me. I'll build my own house and get a job. Blah, 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 yada, yada. Uh, love you and goodbye. <laughs> love you and goodbye. Wow. Alright, come to think of it, in retrospect, this might not have been the most harmless of pranks to play on a parent. Nope. No. Could have gave your mom a heart attack. In. Oldest child is supposed to know better, just saying. Really shirking your responsibilities as a big sister there, Rach. <laughs> I put the note on mom's pillow, and when we heard the garage door opening, I made myself scarce. Apparently, Rachel hid too, I guess for good measure. And when mom walked into the house, she went into her bedroom looking for us and noticed the note. <laughs> Mom, did you read the letter? Yes. Weren't you gonna go out and look for her? Oh, well, I figured she'd come back when she got hungry. <laughs> yeah. No, no doubt. That's the thing. It, it, there was a, what was it? It was, um... It was South Park. There was an episode of South Park where Cartman was just like, I'm running away from home, guys. Can I stay at your place? No. Well, fine then. I live in the street. And he lives in the streets. He's got like a box over his head. And he's just like, mm, it sucks. He goes back <laughs> home. And he's like, and he's like, well, Mom, I, ha I, I hope you got that out of your system. Because if you don't, because, you know, if you uh, keep doing this, I'm going to run away for real. And then she's like, oh. He said you'd come back as soon as you got hungry. And then Caesar Milan comes back out. He's just like, oh, look, it came back. <laughs> oh, the care and concern I felt from my loving mother in that moment. Obviously, Rachel and I were disappointed. But then Mom got an idea. An awful idea. <laughs> Mama got a wonderful <laughs> The Grinch. Idea. Oh, come on with the Grinch tribute. It's nicely animated. Too. Very well done. <laughs> Even without the smile, because that's yeah. the thing about the original is that the smile was just so devious. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get your dad. You know, parents may not always be cool, but sometimes they're pretty cool. Our prank had been given life once more. <laughs> and when Dad came home, Mom met him at the door and put on her best acting chops. <coughs> oh my gosh, I found this letter on my pillow. I think Becca ran away. What? Yes, look. What did you do? Did, did you say something to her? No, he actually did that. He blamed my mom immediately. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I bet he got an earful about that later. Probably so. <laughs> no, I did not. Rachel, have you seen your sister? 
No, she walked home ahead of me. I haven't seen her. And the Academy Award goes to these two because Dad bought it hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> Damn. And then he Dad, got ready to go call the cops. So of course. Be like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Just a joke. Naturally was very upset and flustered. I mean, the man thinks that his daughter is wandering the streets alone and cold and hungry and probably being eaten by coyotes or squirrels or something. I don't know. <laughs> so he declares, we must go forth and return the second born to her rightful place. <laughs> in these, the hallowed halls of Castle Perham. Okay, I wasn't in the room at the time, but I'm pretty sure that's what he said. <laughs> in his mind. Either way, he told my mom and sister to get ready for the search. But before the harrowing journey could commence, he had to make a pit stop at the bathroom. Now up until this point, Mom and Rachel had done their parts perfectly, but leave it to me to mess up the joke. The joke that was my idea. For you see, there was a wealth of hiding places in that house. Any number of spots would have sufficed. <laughs> Did you pick a but bad I one? chose possibly the worst place apart from just standing out in the open with a lampshade on my You head. stood behind the curtains, even, and even though the curtains didn't go all the way to the floor, didn't you? Didn't you? Head. I picked my mom and dad's shower. Really? <laughs> oh, that's so terrible. <laughs> There's so many mo oh, okay. I had the ultimate hiding place. My mom never figured out where I was. She could never figure out where I was, and then she would leave the room and then I would like pop out and then just like be sitting there in the middle of the room and she'd come and be like, Nate! Nate, what where were you? It was like, I was here the whole time, Mom. There's a reason why my mom does everything in her power to get back at me. Like, over, like, as I'm a, since I'm an adult, she tries her damnedest to get back at me for all the hell I put her through <laughs> when I was a kid. That had a frosted, but still very transparent, glass door. So when Dad walked into the bathroom... Rebecca? <laughs> <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is that I already paid for the order. It's not my problem how you get 426 pumpkins out here. I'll call you back. <clears throat> Dad found me in the shower and was rightfully upset. Probably very relieved, but very upset. Mom and Rachel soon came in laughing hysterically, further rubbing salt in Dad's wound. Mm. You all are a bunch of jerks. <laughs> and as if this whole video couldn't get any juicier, Look what my mother found. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, hold on, hold on. Let me do a dramatic reading of this. <clears throat> and here we go. Dear Mom and Dad, I ran away from home to find my own life. I will build my own house and find my own food. I will find a job and get some money. Don't worry. Or don't worry about me. And put up signs. Don't worry about me. And put up signs that say, "Have you seen me? I will come, and I will come and visit you. You can come and visit me too. I will give you my address when I find it. Love, Rebecca. P.S. I love you. I love you. I love you. And I will miss you. Bye. <laughs> and scene. There we go. This is the actual note from this story. She kept it all of those years. <laughs> you can carbon date this thing and get 25 years of gunk off of it. And if you'll make note, fellow scholars, you shall see that the handwriting has scarcely changed. <laughs> also, I just love the fact that at the bottom here I wrote... I think I got a little bit better. Yeah. ...four times just to make sure that my parents knew this was not personal. Those of you feeling sorry for my dad, don't worry. They say there's only five love languages, but my family has a sixth one. Messing with each other. Dad got his revenge hundreds of times over the years. And trust me when I say, I loved every moment of it. <laughs> and who would want to run away from that? Thanks for joining me for a picnic, Explainers. And thank you so much for tuning in, but now... That sounds familiar. Okay, then. <laughs> Is there a little bonus? Doesn't look like it. 
Oh. <laughs> oh, come on. It's the rustling sound. That's similar to the rustling sounds I heard that scared me and like running back to my to my mom's house. Understandable. You know, if I ever go back to that place, I'll show you all where my uh, where the my place was that I had set up my tent. It's probably overgrown with brush again, but I can but I can show you. Like I remember like going back there with that machete and just like working like for hours, just like chopping down all the shrubbery and like all the briars and everything and then like also like like taking the machete into the ground and like getting the things up by their roots so they didn't grow back yeah man that was that was something that god living on rock bar back in the day that was, was so much thinking fun. like the one you masked over i was like we need to check that one out Someday. stuck on the roof i got stuck on the roof i got stuck on the roof how'd you do that by being silly. Ladder probably fell down or something. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh anyway, so that's gonna that's gonna do it for this one, everybody. This was Rebecca Par uh Parham with uh Running Away from Home. Uh this was uh this was a good one. And mm -hmm. honestly I, I love seeing stuff like this. It reminds me of my own uh days of adolescence where I got into some chicanery. So anyway, till next time. I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Take care.